Yeah, so I guess um, maybe by way of introduction for any people uh, who will be watching this in future on um, on um, uh, YouTube. Um, so this is a group where uh, we're going through the documentation of uh, various tidyverse packages. And uh, today we're going through um, uh, the rowwise uh, function and the rowwise vignette um, for dplyr. Uh, so previously we looked at how to do grouping by by rows or, or sorry uh, grouping by by columns um, and now we're going to look at something maybe a little less traditional uh, which is grouping by rows. Um, so I guess this won't be the most rich motivation but as you can kind of see here on my screen is for, for people who are very familiar with R um, you know most of our functions are, are operating columns. That's kind of their their natural natural mode of operation. Um, there are some exceptions. Um, I think BaseR has a few row functions. Uh, I think row sums is row, I forget what it is row sums or row sum. Um, few few row wise functions that 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 are available, but uh, the default is. Basically, that that R works within columns, and if you want to kind of work across rows, that might be you're you're kind of um, working against the grain. It's probably going to be a, a lot, uh, maybe a bit harder. But sometimes you actually need to do that. Sometimes you actually need to do row-wise operations um, that extend beyond what what R kind of um, I shouldn't say allows, but makes easy. For, for for users through through existing functions, so that's that's a little bit on the motivation. So sometimes you need rows. Uh, the good answer is when you need rows, um, you have you have row wise. Um, so row wise is pretty easy to to use, uh, and, and really, um, I guess I'll, I'll loosely talk about it like this. <laughs> Pardon me for, um, for for I guess for clarity of. Um, uh, a presentation, even though technically it's not quite right, um, is you know previously we talked about grouping by columns, you know using columns uh, like lo looking within groups, uh, distinct groups of values and, and designated columns. So group by um, that Shah covered uh, uh, last week, um, and uh, so rowwise is going to help us have grooves, uh, rows that are gonna kind of like run across columns of, of, of data sets. So I guess maybe kind of jumping down on my notes a little bit, but uh, um, providing, you know, a little graphical example is, imagine you're gonna run a row within within this block. So along this this row of, 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 rectang of a rectangular data set um, or of a data set. Um, so you're grouping by rows. How do you, how do, you do that? Um, so if you're familiar with the uh, how things were before before by um, uh, I guess as a, a southerner from from the United States we talk about antebellum so before the Civil War I guess this is antebellum uh, is uh, before the the dot by um, uh, uh, dot by parameter existed um, in, in a lot of tidyverse functions. You know, we would do something like this for for group by, right? So you'd have a data set. First, you would group the data set um, uh, with group by. You, you perform some op, you know, one or many operations, and then you would ungroup the data set. That would be kind of the the typical workflow. Well, the good news is that 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 muscle memory, that that mental model of the world is going to apply for row wise too. So you can you can take a data set and simply, you know, group group by, you know, take level, we'll take empty cars, for example. Um, uh, we'll group by uh, the rows, do something. I'll just take a, a mean um, within the rows across a certain number of columns and and then have have a have a result. Uh, I guess this isn't the best example since uh maybe I'll um, do something like this and just select uh, uh, the, the rows that I actually use so we can see that it did what I'm saying it did. Um, so we need these plus row mean. All right, let's try it again. 
And so here we're we're, we're performing a, a mean um, within within the rows. Um, yeah, so we're kind of summing these values and dividing by three the number of columns, and then here we have our result. Um, at least that's the idea. Um, so it, it, it's pretty easy. It, row wise, so group, do something, and then ungroup. Um, now, what does it do exactly? So that um, we, we we've kind of seen this already, but you know, let's let's create some toy data, just this data frame, um, and then we can. Um, I guess what's what does it do? It's more, I guess, looking at the back end. I guess you could say. Um, uh, so we, we can look at, we can create a data frame that's now kind of a group data frame in a sense, and look at how it looks. So if you use just the print function for, for this tibble, you'll see kind of interestingly, you have a tibble, right? No surprises there. You can see the contents of the tibble. Again, no surprises. And here you have row wise. So now there's some, when you're, when you're grouping the, when you're grouping by rows, you're, you're grouping by, um, so when you're grouping by rows, you're, you're kind of like adding some attribute to, to the data set that it's a it's a, a row-wise grouped data set in a certain sense. Um, what's interesting, they don't show this in the the documentation, but I, I I started I started looking at this myself, and I thought it was interesting enough to share. Is that if you look at the data set, we can kind of see how it's structured, and 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 there's some interesting things going on here. So if you just take the data set, our, our um, row-wise data set, call it that for brevity. Um, and look at the attributes of the data set. What's interesting is, you know, here we've got the class of the object. So you know, we have all the traditional things, um, you know, data frame, tibble, tibble data frame. And now we have an additional class, row-wise data frame. Um, that's that's interesting. So basically by by using row-wise, we've added a class to, 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 to the object. Um, row names always exist, names of columns always exist. And then for the grouping, we've got something that's interesting. So with groups here, we've got this 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 data set that represents the grouping structure, and it's kind of a little hard, at least for me, to parse. But um, uh, yeah, um, you can see that there's some interesting things going on uh, in terms of attributes. But what's 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 uh, what's also worth and this this will kind of as I as I mentioned earlier, somewhat contradict what I said earlier that we're basically grouping by rows. Um, and creating a, a kind of a, a data frame that's grouped by rows. It's not formally true. Um, so there's this one function we haven't covered yet is group data frame. Um, so if you want to learn a little bit more, there's this nice, there's this really nice vignette here. Uh, maybe I'll just for, uh, put it in the console to pull up the documentation article. Uh, you can have a look, there are lots of functions here about um, looking at the, basically inspecting the grouping structure of of a of a data frame, um, and the one that I'm using here is you know is grouped uh, data frame, which actually, whoops, may not appear here, um, but the idea is that this will return a logical value of true or false depending on whether this is a grouped data frame. And if we if we execute the code, it turns out that it's not a grouped data frame. Um, if we try to look at the grouping variables, there are none, um, so it's an empty character vector. Um, and and then if we look at the groups here, um, the groups of the data data frame, there's there's nothing. So in in a sense it's not a it's not a group, it's not a group data frame. Um, but nevertheless it it sort of operates as if it if it were, right? So it's um, what's nice about this is once we <clears throat> once we issue some uh, like once we group a data frame by rows, once we use row wise, we end up having some interesting side effects. Um, to see this, um, let's contrast two cases. So case number one is where we don't have any row groups. Uh, so this is just a data frame where we're computing the mean over several several columns here. Um, and so, uh, you know, we just have basically what's computationally being done is we have one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six divided by you know the the six cells that we have and we get three point three point five um as as the result um so like twenty one divided by six um, um which you know is isn't that surprising I guess 
Um, but maybe that's not what we intended to do. Maybe what we wanted to do is instead to create, uh, to compute a mean within, within rows. So say, what is the mean for row one? What, and independently of that, what is the mean for row two and so forth? Uh, so if we, if we use row wise now um, and perform the same operation, we'll get a different result actually. Uh, so here you can see we've got, we've got, you know, at first glance, you can see in this column M, which is the mean, computed mean, we have different values for different rows. So that's, a, and, and as you can see, that's computing, it's doing what we wanted, uh, uh, or what I just described last is computing a mean within the row. So we're saying, uh, this is, you know, this is nine divided by three equals three, right? Um, so we're, we're computing a mean with, within, within this row. Um, and I guess I'm being a little silly here is, you know, parroting a, a, a drug advertisement commercial that, you know, it, it creates some side effects and it, it, or, or at least it, it causes a behavior. So it causes the, it causes functions to operate within a, a vector, like a, a vector, but it's a vector that's not a column, which is the default behavior, but it's, a, it's sort of like a vector that's a row, right? Um, so that's the side effect. And this is kind of the silly, you know, drug advertisement thing is, you know, if, 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 uh, if, if side effects persist, you know, consult a doctor, uh, consult your documentation. Uh, really, all you have to do is uh, just like with, with group, remember to ungroup thereafter so that you're not left with a, um, um, a row wise data set. So you can see here after my computation, I still have a row wise data set. If I wanted it to make it not to make it just a regular data set that's not grouped in any, any way using kind of like the broadest sense of, of grouped, then I could just do ungroup, um, which is not a different ungroup than for uh, group by. It's the exact same ungroup. And you can see here when I perform the operation, I'm left with a tibble that doesn't have this little row wise thing. And you know, where I'd inspect the attributes and all the rest, I'd see that all of the changes to the attributes of the, ob well, all the attribute changes, changes um, um, implement, um, caused by row wise are, are gone, but nevertheless, I'm left with the computed result, which is what I want. Um, so that's that's how you use how you use row wise or, or rather what it does. Um, and how does it do it? The, the actually the um, I think I've kind of described it a little bit up to this point, but I think the documentation various from various points of the documentation, we get a little bit um, of a description about how this actually works. Um, or at least a nice mental model. I've not looked at the source code to confirm this is actually how it works. But um, if, if we're looking at the vignette um, of the uh, of of, of uh, the, the row wise vignette um, in in the in, in dplyr, so um, basically uh, this this document right here. If you come to dplyr's page, um, uh, document doc page. And then come to the row wise operations. That's what I'm calling the row wise, the row wise vignette. Um, they 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 explain at a point um, that basically what row wise does is it splits a data frame into rows, computes a sum, you know, computes something for, you know, a summary, uh, computes something for each row, and then joins the 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 results back together. So. In, in maybe some sense, it's sort of chopping up the data frame into a you know a data frame that consists of several rows into a data frame that consists uh, sort of into a set of a set of rows performing operations on those rows and then um, joining it back together. So it's kind of the I guess a little hidden ETL of you know extract, transform, and um, um, I forget what the L is for. Um, load, I guess, um, that's going on. And, and then also from, 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 the, docu from the documentation of, of the row-wise function itself, there's a little note here. It says a row-wise uh, row data frame with, with, uh, with class row-wise DF. Um, so sorry, rather, what it describes what uh, row-wise returns, what its return value is. Uh, so it returns a data frame with this class. And indeed, we saw that earlier when we were looking at um, um, when we were looking at the, the, the data frame, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, here we are. So row wise with attributes, and we can see that there's a, a row wise underscore DF um, class. 
And note that row y, uh, note that a, a row wise DF is implicitly grouped by row, but is not a group data frame, which is exactly what we found when we tested earlier. Using this is group DF, we saw that it's not it's not a it's not a group data frame. Um, these are maybe so, some, uh, some some notes on the internals. Go ahead, Shah. Uh, so actually, in the group by, we are actually uh, grouping by the columns. I think the default behavior is that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So for, for but group this by, is the opposite opposite behavior. Like we are grouping by rows. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Although, like, not not formally in the sense. That, I mean, remember when in your presentation of group by? I mean, you could kind of you could group by the things, and you could see the group variables, right? The group bars. Yes. It would yes. return something. So I, I think somehow, like, Dplyr must be changing structurally um, the. The data frame and it seems like here it may not be the case it's just somehow adding a class and some attribute yeah adding a class to the data set that affects how things um how various uh functions perform on it um but uh yeah yeah so actually uh there is no function uh like ungroup we just have to. Uh... So 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 there so there is, um, it, but it's the exact same on group actually. Um, okay, 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 okay. That, that's so... the part that's maybe like a little confusing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, because you, you know, yeah. you know, you have group and ungroup. I mean, in a certain sense, it should be like row and unrow or something yeah. like that. But yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it, you're using just the same ungroup, and it seems like this this I guess the ungroup must have like a method for group data sets and then a method for row wise data sets. And yeah. it, you know, behind the scenes, it does something different to restore the original okay. um, data data frame structure, I guess. Oh yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, uh, right, so I guess the kind of canonical use case, I mean, there are other use cases, but for me, I think the most compelling use case, and, and here I'm, I don't have any notes. I'm just going to be reading from the, uh, kind of walking through the, uh, the, 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 the vignette is um, um, for, for several sections here. Cause I, I feel like their examples are, are nice and clear enough that they're probably not worth my coming up with an alternate explanation or alternate examples or, or worse still just copy and pasting from from theirs and putting it into into vs code but you know kind of the canonical like use case uh, is is you you'll have some data frame like we do here like imagine we just construct some data frame that just the values one uh one through well anyway you can see one through four or say uh, one one yeah, you can see the 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 values here. So you're constructing a data set that looks like this. There's there's a little bit, two more rows not being shown, but this is what the data frame looks like. Um, and so let let's imagine that we wanted to compute, um, we wanted to compute uh, the sum of columns W, X, Y, and Z so, um, uh, for for each row. So compute this sum compute or a sum for this vector, a computer sum for this vector, a computer sum for this vector, right? Um, so what you would do um, uh, or what you could do is is is, is this. So you could you could uh, you first group the data set and so they're grouping the data set and they're going to store it in this object RF. So it's kind of row row wise frame or row wise data frame, I guess you can think of. So it's taking the data frame that they've just created. Um, grouping it row wise um, and then you can perform some operations so there may be two two kind of things you could think that might be useful first is you could you could perform a mutate and simply add an additional column that um, is, is the sum of these columns right so you have the create a column total which is the sum of these columns w x y and z um, and indeed, for each one of these rows, you can see that it's performing exactly that operation. Um, so, uh, uh, so it's it's computing the sum. Oops, sorry, computing the sum right here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, adds to 100, um, et cetera. So this this might be a thing that you 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 conceivably could want to do. Um, I mean, you'd have to think about your use case. Imagine, for example, 
you, you had a data frame that's in sort of a, a you know, wider format um, where maybe these are repeated measures across time, you know, time period, you know, measure one, measure two, measure three, and you want to compete compute some statistic across all of those, those, those measures for subject one, for example. Um, then, you know, if your data were in that format, you could compute this, this allows you to compute that. Um, or alternatively, maybe you wanted to summarize. So instead of, um, you know, instead of, uh, um, yeah, instead of adding a column, you just want to retain the, the summary column that you compute. So you can do exactly the same. You can take this row, data set, um, do summarize, and then compute the, the, the total for each, each row, just as we did before. And indeed, you see that the, uh, the result is simply, you just have the last column total rather than all the other, all the other rows. Um, now, one thing that this vignette kind of talks about and that we haven't talked about too much, I, I guess I'll maybe go over briefly, is that you know, in, in this case, we're, we're talking about sort of a, we're talking about a um, reasonably few number of columns that we could comfortably specify in this fashion, you know, that we could name explicitly. But you might easily have cases where you want to perform operations across a row um, or, uh, or within rows, and it might be difficult to, to specify um, the names of the columns explicitly, right? The good news is that there's a there's this function um, called C across. So it's sort of, um, I guess it basically effectively like creates a vector. You can think of it as like the C function, I guess. I don't know if that was the intention here, but C across. So create kind of a vector across these columns. And you can see within this, you can use tidy select to specify the columns and all the ways that you can with tidy select. So you can have the, um, you can create kind of the, um, uh, you know, like uh, all of the columns between W and Z inclusive, um, or you can use something more sophisticated. For example, all, all, of, the, all of the numeric columns. So tidy selects where, is numeric, so where columns are numeric, like take that set of columns and then for those columns, uh, you know, using those columns compute compute something, perform some operation. So you're you're able you're able to use still the niceties of of tidy select, which isn't well, I guess previously wasn't uh, poss possible um, with uh, at least to my knowledge for things like row row sum. Um, which is the base R's uh, kind of ability to, to compute sums across rows. Um, right. Um, and this is kind of mixing and matching a few things uh, uh, that we haven't gone over quite yet is, um, you know, computing computing a summary um, and, and then, or computing a total and then computing a percentage for each one of the columns. So this is, you know, first step here, I guess you could say is um, you're not seeing the original data set down below, but uh, or data frame. Basically, this is the data. Yeah, actually, this is the data frame. Is you know, first step is computing computing the total, uh, and then and then you can perform something we haven't done yet. Is is, is column wise operations is kind of iterating over a set of columns, performing a function, applying a function to 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 a, each each member of a set of columns. Um, right. So you could have, uh, you know, basically with row wise, you can, you can use, you can apply really any kind of summary function. Um, and, and the, the, but the vignette notes that, um, in some cases you might be reinventing the wheel. Uh, and in, and, and in, in those cases, it, it may be better that you use base R. Um, so, you know, we're, so far we've been looking at, computing means and computing sums across rows. Well, it's nice that dplyr allows us to kind of write write code that allows us to do the same, but um, they're actually base R functions that accomplish that same objective, um, uh, which is, you know, row sums, which computes a, a sum within the row, uh, row means, which does, you know, computes a mean within the row. Uh, and these things are faster. Uh, 
uh, than dplyr. They have less kind of computational overhead, and I imagine behind the scenes they're using you know C. So it's very kind of uh, lower level, very fast things. So if you find yourself in a case where there's an existing base R function, I think the vignette's kind of implicitly saying use that instead, um, if if you can. Um, but previously there was kind of a challenge of designating all of the the columns that um, that you want to include in the row summary. So row sum I think works quite well for actually just use open the documentation here. Um, at least from my personal experience using this, okay, for whatever reason this is lagging. Um, it, it it works quite well in cases where you can explicitly name columns, but it performed a lot less well when you wanted to use tidy select uh, or something like that, where you kind of indirectly, I lost connection. Are you, are you still hearing me, Shah? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, sorry. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's my uh, corporate VPN is blocking these requests. Anyway, um, um, anyway, like you, you could, with row sums, you could you could explicitly you could explicitly name uh, you know it's good when you could explicitly name columns, but it performed a lot less well when you couldn't, or at least it was to my experience it was harder to 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 kind of craft code that did that. And dplyr, this is again something we've not covered yet. Dplyr has this new this new function um, that came out in dplyr 1.0 or some point thereafter called pick, which is sort of Sort of like select, if you will. I guess that's the short version. Um, and you can imagine here, kind of what it what it does is it, um, um, you know, it's computing a row somewhere. It's it's selecting those columns where, you know, where judging by their attributes, they're numeric, and then computing a sum across those rows. So um, it, it's very much like what we saw above with C across, right? Um, same idea. We'll we'll come to pick. Uh, later, I'm sure. Um, but these end up being a lot more performant um, than than just using dplyr all the way down. Uh, but still, you may have cases where you need to use, you need to, you, you need to, maybe you have a function you want to apply, or you have some case that's just not, that, that doesn't fit into what, what base R has to offer. Another use case, um, uh, that I personally, I, I'm not involved in this very much, but still, I think it's worth, worth talking about is you may have a data frame that uh, consists of, of, of list columns. So um, for, for these, actually, maybe I'll, I'll uh, uh, kind of doc, doc this. Because I, I, for my own part, I'm not very, um, I, I don't use this very much. And so these kind of things throw me for a loop sometimes. Um, So let's just create this, and then we'll, we'll kind of look at what it inspect inspect it. So this is this is a list uh, where you have a list column. So you have a data frame with a column X, uh, who whose elements are you know um, whose elements are lists, right? So this is a list with elements you know four, five, six. A list with elements two, three, et cetera. So this is a this is a list column. Um, so in a sense, like if yeah, uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, so, so that's um, you. You may have a data set like that, and previously it was a little hard to work with those data sets, where you might want to do things like you know compute the length. Like you, what what you would intend to do is compute the length of of each um, each uh, list in your list column, right? Where each element is a list, and if you did it in a straightforward way. Um, uh, like this, you, you'd get the wrong answer, right? So instead, if you compute a length in this fashion, you'd end up computing um, the, the the length of the column, not the length of each each um, element in in the column. <clears throat> now there are some there's some base there's apparently a base R function for for doing exactly that. Again, I've never used it, so rather than length, you add an S lengths. Um, and it'll compute the length of each um, each list in 
in your list column. Uh, you could do other things like, uh, you know, the functional functional programming um, with, you know, s apply or or, or, or per. Um, so applying the function length to, you know, explicitly to each element in this uh, column, and then, you know, uh, obtaining the, the the length of each um, column, or each element of the column. But there's there's another way. Um, so you can you can kind of do the same. You can take your data frame, which is again a data frame of of, of list columns. So for memory would look like this. Um, group it by rows, and then perform that operation that you wanted to do straightforwardly um, at the beginning, but that didn't give you the right result. But now now will because the computations are being done in in the rows so they're kind of explicitly treating each row as its own sort of entity and computing a computing some value for each entity so you don't have to know all these things before you can just say let me just rather than have r work within columns of a data frame let me have r work within rows of a data frame and then i know from that that it's going to compute uh, a value for each row which in this case would be the length of each each element in your list column. Um, I thought that was kind of a, a neat way in which um, dplyers rowwise allows you to, if, if you know rowwise exists, it allows you to kind of sidestep a lot of these complexities. It um, maybe others who, who, who know and are used to these ways of dealing with the list column data frames or data frames with list columns, maybe these will these these traditional solutions will be more appealing or logical to them. But for the rest of us, um, you know, our uh, dplyr has 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 a has a new solution, which um, you know kind of makes some some sense. Um, right. Uh, and, and you can do the same thing. <clears throat> this is kind of a continuation of 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 of, of the same. Um, I'll just take this over uh, here and, and create uh, this. Oops, I don't know what happened. I took a picture of my desktop. Great. Um, and something like that. Uh, And now we can view these data frames. Um, so here, here you can see we have this this data frame <clears throat> DF that's again um, with list columns. But you know, since here here the list elements of the list can can have different classes, right? So here we have a um, we we have a a list um, you know where the first element is is. A vector or um, a numeric vector, <clears throat> and then the next list is uh, um, our next element is 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 a is a character vector, like an atomic character vector. Um, so you know, with with that kind of in mind, here you can, um, you know, if if you wanted to compute the, if you want to determine what the type is of 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 each. Again, you're working with list columns of each element in your list column and you tried to do this straightforwardly using type of um, and then you know as before length you're going to get the wrong result you're going to see that the care that the column is a list which is right because you're working in in traditional r fashion of working within columns right but if you um if if you do things differently so here we're using rf which is uh, if you'll recall this is our our root our data set grouped row wise, um, then, um, oh sorry, what I missed here is this GF right here is a is, is grouping grouping by the column, the column G, which is, it's kind of an attempt to, <clears throat> pardon me, it's it's an attempt I guess to kind of create some index that corresponds to rows, um, so if you group by that. This is right here, and, and, and mutate. It's going, still going to pick up that this is a, a list, which is kind of annoying. Um, 
uh, instead, what you could do is 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 you know have the data set be a group, you know, like a set of rows where it's grouped by rows, and then you can compute the type of the vectors um, that compose your your list, your elements of the list, and you can indeed see that for the first uh, the first row is an integer of length three, and then the second element is a character is character vector of length one, right? So you can see that that gives you the right answer. Um, good. Um, uh, sure. Actually, I have a confusion. Like for example. We have a in the list. We have different elements. So, uh, so if the but no, I'm wrong because in the vector we have the same data types. Yeah. So I was actually yep. thinking like we have one, two, and a in the first uh, list of the column, and then mm -hmm. a one in the but it is not right because vector have only the one data types. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting way to, to to do something that fits more with, I don't know, kind of intuition, I guess, uh, or at least my intuition about how things would work. Um, let me jump a bit because I was kind of kind of come back to something that um, might might bring things home. Um, an, another potential use case, um, which I, I don't know if I, well, yeah, an, another potential use case. Um, could be where you want to make repeated calls to a function and your columns provide you arguments for your functions. Um, so if you've worked with, with um, let's say like PMAP or something like that in the per family, this will probably be familiar. So let's, let's imagine you wanted to run some simulations, let's say, and you create a data set of the parameters of your simulation. So the number, the number of uh, the number of numbers that you want to generate, um, and then their their range, um, and then you want to generate uh, a uniform number um, using those parameters. So um, you could do you could do this: is take your data frame of of parameters for your simulation, so where each row corresponds to a set of parameters for a simulation. So this would be simulation one, simulation two, simulation three. Um, you'd, you'd have that data frame of parameters. You could then group it by rows, where again, rows, the way you set up your data frame, the rows are your um, yeah, the rows are your 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 parameters for a simulation. And then you could generate something. Um, and, and so this is maybe a bit detailed, and I might skip kind of fast over this, even if it'll end up being a bit unsatisfying. Um, is you can perform a mutate and generate, importantly, generate a list. Um, a list that uh, that um, that kind of captures your uniform the uniform um, the results of your kind of a random number generator in a certain sense um, uh, that utilize your parameters. So kind of looking at the inner function here. So this is the uh, the kind of random number generator number of number of where the, uh, here you have the number of numbers to generate. So this comes from this column in. The, the minimum, so the range, you know, the minimum number, the minimum and the maximum, and then you're going to generate these 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 values. And so what you'll get is 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 this. So you'll get your your set a data frame with your set of parameters plus a new column since we've done mutate, um, and then you'll you'll have um, a list um, a list whose elements are these types. Um, I can probably let me actually just. Uh, yeah, let me let me run this, and uh, it'll be a little clearer. Um, I hope. Uh, rather than fight against this, let me just uh, load um, Tibble and load Deplier. Okay, and we'll take this. Just close this for the moment. Um, so we'll create our data frame, and then we'll create our results. Um, so let's view the results, which, oh yeah, actually, let me just assign them to something.
here we go. Um, so here you can see in a bit more detail, you know, we've, we've got the parameters, the number of numbers, the, the, the min for the range, the max for the, you know, min and max for kind of the range of the numbers. And then you can see the, 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 num the, num the kind of the vector of numbers that, that's been generated. Uh, so the important part for this, um, and the vignette goes into more detail as to why this is the case, is you need to wrap this, this uh, right part in, in list. Um, so that you don't run afoul of some expectations where, um, you know, you mutate is generating more than one value um, uh, per per row, I guess you could say. So you've got to wrap it in list so that it returns a list, even if the list only contains one element. Um, and, and they go on in this section to kind of talk about other use cases where um, it's kind of variants variance around the same, even including um, where you might want to vary the function. So here we're using, um, you know, uh, our, you know uh, getting a uniform, um, creating a uniform distribution, basically creating a, uh, some random numbers according to a uniform distribution. Um, but you could also have different, different functions, right? So you imagine now you've got uh, a data set where you have the, uh, the number generator function and then some parameters to pass to that function. Uh, so you, basically you could, you could kind of using using the same construct where you're still using row wise, you could generate, you know, a set of simulations where the function for the simulations differs from one row to, to the next. Um, and 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 basically at the end of the vignette, they're sort of talking about how the they, they use the first person here, I. I pre presumably this is this is Hadley talking. Um, you know, row wise was apparently, I, I seem to remember this actually, row wise appeared and then was it had the questioning badge you know as in question questioning for a long time and I, I kind of had the question of why is it questioning um but uh, uh I, I guess the idea was that you know Hadley and maybe the deep player or tidyverse team thought that there may be better solutions with base R um but realized you know after some time um that actually you know how much people wanted or needed to perform row wise computations and and how row wise simply was 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 easier for people to use in, in a way that kind of translated their intent into code than than the alternatives with you know the uh, brackets and things like that i'll i'll leave that for further reading for others and, and, and indeed for me it actually makes things a lot easier I, I, maybe this is going to be a bit too I guess kind of personal and not generalizable, but you know, I'd mentioned in past sessions that I'm I'm a I guess you can call it recovering Stata user, um, um, and, and so I um, I I I find that there's some things in Stata that are really compelling um, uh, that, that that end up doing row wise computations, and so probably this is okay. This is on the web. You can search it. There's a set of this function and. Uh, or a set of functions in Stata called eGen. Uh, so Stata kind of generates variables in a certain way, and these are like an extension to like the base way that it generates variables. And there are a few of these that are really kind of nice that end up being, um, they're, 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 they're row-wise computations. So this, well, there's a function called anyCount that um, basically what it does is you, you give it a list of variables um, and then a list of values, and it says, Basically, it's you want it to return a count of the number of variables in this set that contain one or more, you know, that contain um, some some of the values that you you uh, pass to it. And similarly, there's this function called any match that will return, uh, you know, kind of a boolean value of one, basically true one, if if it finds in this in the set of variables that you pass to it. Um, any of the values that you are looking for. So it's kind of goes in, in, in tandem with these two. And for my own, like some of my own work, um, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, I, I'm wanting for something like this and, 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 and I've found it really frustratingly hard to do an R. I don't know if it, it's inherently hard to do an R, if that just betrays my lack of skills in R. Um, but I, I found these functions compelling and I didn't find the good alternative in R and I didn't I, all every time I've wanted to do this I end up wasting an hour on stack overflow looking for the answer um, until now with rowwise um, so I'll just kind of I'll, I'll 
imagine like you have some some data set that I've created right here where I, I don't know, let's imagine that you have uh, a column of some set of variables. I'll just make them generically A, B, and C, where you have one, ones and twos. It could be one and zero. But you know, one is 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 where you have, you know, let let's say that some some something that you're observing has an attribute that you 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 care about and then two denotes the absence of that attribute so you know yeah one has the attribute two doesn't have the attribute and maybe you want to create some summary that says well among this set of desirable attributes um how many attributes does this does this subject have right um <clears throat> Maybe this could be a psychological test where you're saying, you know, how many right answers did they, did the subject give, or um, some kind of scale that measures something. Um, anyway, you're wanting to perform some kind of summary function, uh, which isn't a sum or necessarily, well, it could be transformed into a sum a little bit, but you're, you're performing some kind of row wise, whoops, some kind of row wise operation. Um, and this is, you know, back to my, my any count uh, and any match example. So I, I, basically what I did is I said, let me just recreate this in R. This is not a great implementation, but hopefully it'll just at least communicate like, you know, through an example, like how this could work. Um, so what I want to do is I want to basically, as I said before, like count, you know, the number of values, basically return a count um, where I'm counting over a certain number of variables. Um, or columns, let's say. Um, I'm going to see. I'm going to have a count that's the number of columns where my desired value appears. Um, uh, so imagine, let's say, I want to count how many how many ones do I find across columns A, B, and C. Let's say, right? Um, so can I create that function? And so I, I kind of took to it and I, I I did exactly that. You know, so I'll take a data frame, and you know, importantly. I'll have R operate in rows, not in columns, because this is inherently a, a row-wise operation. And then I'll do a simple mutate where I'm going to compute the sum, uh, you know, it's over a set of variables. Um, I'll come back to maybe kind of unpacking what this does and says. But basically, for over a set of variables, I want to see, um, you know, how many. Uh, basically, working from the inside out, I want to see like for each each variable in a set, I want to see if it contains um, contains a, um, a certain value or set of values. And so this is going to generate, as you might imagine, like for a vector, like a, a set of like trues and falses. And then I just want to sum that. Um, so say, how many, how many trues do I have? Um, and then ungroup, so I don't have, a, so, so that I'm, uh, at the end of the day, I don't have a row-wise data set, um, uh, but I get a number of counts. Uh, so let me just kind of execute the function and then we can maybe come back for some explanations. This isn't the greatest implementation of the idea, but it, it still kind of works. So here I've got my, you know, my ones and twos. And here I can see how many one, and basically I was looking here for over in this data frame, looking across columns A, B, and C for each subject, how many ones do I find? And so if I look at, you know, column or say row number one, I have two ones. And indeed that's the count that I've returned, you know, row number two, it's all twos. So I have no ones. Uh, row number three, I have one, one, so I have a count of one that gets that gets returned. So I thought this was kind of nice that that um, in a sense that uh, R is row wise, at least for me and maybe others recovering fellow recovering Stata users allows you a way to um, kind of just very few lines of code, uh, you know, write 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 uh, any count or, or write something that, that performs this, and you can do the same with with any match. Um, that's just the idea. It's, it's it's actually the same code. The only difference is here that instead of sum, I have any, right? So uh, this this inner thing right here will just generate for, you know, the vector of my, my row vector, if I could call it that. It'll generate a, a bunch of trues and falses, and then and then I summarize it as any, you know, is there any true? Um, and and then then I have my results as something that appears in my row and it summarizes my 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 row. Um, anyway, that's that's kind of what I wanted to want to present, wanted to share. Uh, I don't know if these last examples were were useful for anyone except for me, <laughs> but I thought it was just kind of a nice maybe like way beyond the examples that are in the vignette and that are in the documentation of how one could go about utilizing um, 
uh, role wise to to do something that might be might be useful and might be a useful thing that at least in my opinion and my experience is has been historically hard for a, uh, let's say a beginner intermediate R user to to do. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll stop there and then uh, Shah and I don't know if there there are others that I don't know if Jack ended up joining, but uh, yo, yeah. hey Jack. I don't know if this uh, if you guys have any questions comments. Yeah, so I I got caught up in that meeting and then I had I, I jumped in and then I got called back to like a really quick follow up. So I only caught <laughs> the last five ten minutes. So I didn't really get the full okay. picture. But what I so I got two questions and sure. the first one is like when I catch up with the vod, do you think I'll find like row wise is done and then next week I don't think about row wise and then two is like. You may have already covered this, but where do you find the most usage for row wise when you're programming or doing analysis? Like I struggle to find good use cases for it. So so honestly, Jack, so uh, to, to your first question, I think yes, with one small caveat that I didn't go over for, you know, is row wise done? I didn't actually dive into the documentation of row wise. It's the row wise, the function itself. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Shah, Shah spoke briefly about it last week, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, you did. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, the only thing, I, and maybe Shah mentioned this last week, and and, and it just it didn't register for me, but I'd always use rowwise without any arguments, but actually you can, um, oh, wait, it doesn't say it here, but I think, I think there's actually, um, I think you could pass it an argument where you could specify columns in a data set that would actually uniquely identify rows. Yeah, so but, it, it but, but it doesn't like, doesn't appear that, that way in select. the docs. You see in the Oh uh, yeah, there we are there. Yes. Right. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. so, so I've I've not used that in practice. Um I'm always you know, in the rare cases that I'm actually using it, I'm using it just, you know, as you've seen it as you've seen it here without any any arguments. So just kind of taking the the row mm -hmm. indices, if you will, as as kind of the grouping variable, uh, so to speak. Um, yeah. Uh, so that that on kind of like the first question. On the second question, Jack, for for me, honestly, I think I've not used row wise much, but I feel like I'm will like having now gained a little bit more comfort with row wise. I think I'm going to use it a lot more because for me, my, my struggle has always been like, I, I don't know if you caught on this bit, which may or may not have been clear about, you know, I have these two functions in Stata that I, I really, whose utility I see in the kind of the work that I do, um, uh, where, where I want to create like row summaries that are across, that are summarizing like whether or not attributes are present um, for like a subject, um, uh and 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 you know I, I feel like this is harder than it ought to be in r um uh because like number one r is column oriented rather than row oriented that's a first thing second thing there aren't any um at least to my knowledge functions that allow you to um that allow you to perform this kind of computation. I mean, you, you have row sums, you have row totals, like more, let's say, statistically oriented things exist. You know, you, you've got those mm -hmm. in base R, which is, I mean, which is good. But for these more maybe like niche cases like mine, there, there's not like an easy way to do this. I, I mean, you, you, there are ways you could do this, but they get a little, they're a little kludgy, I guess I could say. And the other important thing, uh, like third point is the, like the, like around the difficulty of actually using this uh, or doing row wise things is I've found that in my own experience in the past, and as I was saying the shot, like, I don't know if this is because of, this is the way R is, or if it just speaks to my own lack of ability in R, but I found it hard to actually specify basically to use kind of something like tidy select or even just select. Uh, well, yeah, um, I find it hard to select variables um, within, uh, let's say like row, row sums. So mm -hmm. row sums, I think work really well, like in the vignette, when you've got, when you can, when you can name, when you can name columns explicitly um, uh, as you do, let's see. Sorry, and this, is, this is still the base version of row sums, right? Yeah, yeah, this is the base version of row sums. Yeah. And actually they, they don't even show it here, but you can imagine like you'd have row sums and you'd have, you know, W, X, Y, right? Um, and even still that was kind of problematic because I, I think because somehow like, uh, you know, it's not like an, um, 
Well, you have to it, you have to use the square brackets and stuff. It, it's ex 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 exactly, friendly. exactly, yeah. exactly. So that was kind of that was kind of the difficulty. Uh, and so I feel I feel like you know with with um, with um, you know uh, with with row row wise, you have all of the kind of goodness of tidy select and and and, and mm -hmm. sort of like the ergonomics, I guess, if I could put it that way, of being able to select ways things in in that in that fashion. So it's kind of like those combination of things have always driven me nuts with with <laughs> with with R. And like I now I see a kind of a way for, forward um, on to kind of get like the things I actually enjoyed about Stata back in 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 R um, with actually relatively little, little little effort these are not great implementations but they they kind of do the trick um, yeah it's kind of funny because it's row wise and then c across so it's like doing row wise and call wise stuff in that exactly exactly so, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. That's, i i because i've seen a couple of times um i think it's i'd say tan and philippe massacre right in arthur ds will solve some problems that I've been like sat there scratching my head about and it'll be a row wise solution. And every time I'm like, pay attention because this will be useful <laughs> in the future. Yeah. And it, ju it just doesn't, it doesn't get through to me that much. I mean, yeah, I, I, I essentially just echo your concern or not concerns. It's like experiences. Ours all, all everything's vectorized. Everything's about columns. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's sort it's sort of like, you know, like every language and, framework and things like that it's 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 a set of it's a set of uh, sort of like compromises uh, compromises mm -hmm. like you make you make a set of things easy at the expense of other things which become hard you know what i mean yeah, it's, always it, trade-offs yeah exactly trade-offs that's what the word i was, I was, I was looking for is you know a tra tra trade-off and i think that's that's the bargain r has made you know it's like make it really simple like bloody simple to just you know do in columns but then mm -hmm. uh, then uh, then rows rows are a little hard uh, until now yeah. i mean and hopefully this sticks hopefully this doesn't go back to questioning and get deprecated but <laughs> uh, i think this is this is kind of nice i mean to be clear like i i think let's put it this way when working in r i feel like the the the, the column wise way of working it covers 95 percent of my use cases but when i need you know in the past when i needed row stuff I was, it was, mm -hmm. it, was pain, it was painful and it was you know as i was saying earlier is me wasting an hour or more on stack overflow trying to <laughs> trying to to figure out uh you know uh, and really like working against the grain um uh but th this seems a lot more yeah, a, yeah, a lot, a I, lot I, better solution. If you're doing some, if you're doing some stuff with matrices, right? Like, yeah, you want to do linear equations and you want to do matrix multiplications and stuff like that. You really, you can always start like a, a column is a row in a way. It's like it's a transpose yep. row, right? But like, it does help always then to be like familiar with using row wise operations and call wise. Because we use data frames for like everything in R. Yeah. And it's just, it's so much more efficient to store things in columns than it is in rows and to do operations on columns that I guess, yeah, we just get so used to it that we train that muscle. Um, yep. Even Tribble, like, you know, you know, Tribble here, like it yep. takes me ages to make a Tribble and it not give me <laughs> an error all the time. Whereas if I just do Tibble and like, yeah do all of the columns separately i can do it first time every time it's yeah it's pretty funny um, it's 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 about the commas it's the miss the missing commas yeah, <laughs> yeah it just it yeah it, it doesn't sit well with me. i just don't get it when i when i use it um cool though i mean i think it's yeah i I always look out for row wise uses and see if we kind of notice notice really, more um uh I, I i just had an idea like for example in the row wise if we had an argument to mention the row number like we mm -hmm. want to show we want to calculate the sum of the first row mm -hmm. that would be very helpful because right now i think there is no such argument we are all yeah, in the operations row wise and that's it yeah you'd have to i guess you have to like slice first right um yeah Whereas, yeah, if you had it inside, like if it says which or something or where, and you put like row underscore number equals, like if you could do, yeah, if you could yeah. do something like that, it'd be quite nice. Yeah, that's the way yeah. Stata operates, and I, but, but I think, I think like 
data.table, I'm not a data.table user. Uh, well, I, I know some some very basics, but I feel like it might be, it might offer some of that, no? I'm also not a data table user. I'm like you, I know some very basic syntax, but I do everything with data frames and like yeah. deep layer ones. Yeah, same, same here. Yeah. Nice, cool. Okay. So so next week I'll um I'll prepare some coal wise stuff. Um and I'll catch up on on the good work that you did here on row wise. Um, so, so Jack, one one question. Um uh do you know where even in this like vignette that I went I went through, there's some things that we hadn't we hadn't covered and I, I, I honestly don't know where they fit. Um so this new this new function pick. Um, for example, yeah, pick is pick more is pick taken from oh, it's select, okay, multiple though. multiple columns. Okay, so it's going to be, yeah, there this 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 kind of set of things. It's this yeah, these will come up for the column the column, the column wise. wise yeah. yeah, this might come up as a C also. Uh, it came I, up I today was... for for row wise to C across. Yeah, I was using pick last week for some stuff and I can't I have it hasn't fully entered my brain like why it's better, but it is really completely nice. Completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. For example, for this this uh this was I thought was really elegant where you could sort of like pass mm -hmm. you could identify for row sums in a tidyverse way the columns you wanted to pass to 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 row sums. That was very nice. The, yeah. No 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 brackets needed. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is nice. I mean, there's it looks very untidy in the sense there's like lots of nest, nested functions. calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it but it does look good. I'll try to. Is that in what group is that in? Sorry, in the deep layer reference for for it, pick, pick. You mean? Yeah. Um. So it's in. Uh. Well, sorry, uh, we have to go back a few times, or alternatively, just go here. Um. It's in it says so multiple in, multiple multiple columns. So it's in the vector. So yeah, see. I'll Mo try to I'll try to do this next week with the column wise oh, stuff. Columns. I think this go. seems to fit quite nicely with what I'll cover in the column wise stuff. Yeah, um, and I think um, I I don't know unless uh, for for the column wise I. At least when I've read it, read it in the past and reread it, and finally it's sort of entered my mm -hmm. my brain. Is it seems like a really big, meaty vignette. So, like, I, mm -hmm. anyway, I, I defer to you. We'll see. We'll see if it needs like one week or two weeks. So. Yeah, I, I like you see vector functions as well. If you if you go down vector functions, I think I just put in the sign up sheet today. Like it's probably two weeks on here. Um. Mm. stuff like case match and case when co like they're really useful function coalesce and this consecutive id thing saves a lot of issues of like doing a bunch of cum sums and stuff so there's there's quite a lot of cool stuff in these functions and they're quite i'd say like advanced a lot of them um but right, yeah so maybe column wise is also two weeks yeah, I mean, even just like looking at the vignette uh, column wise, uh, you you can see that there's there's kind of a lot, a lot here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the questions in Arthur DS for a while were were like things you needed to use across to solve. Um, yep. Yep. So it's, yeah, it's pretty powerful stuff. Cool. Nice. Well, I I gotta hop off because I'm um. I got one more week to the marathon. So I got my last few training sessions. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Nice stuff. From what I saw, the row wise, like the, the thing you put together, that really comprehensive and good. So I'm going to make sure I catch up on that. Um, and I'll make sure that I <laughs> grab, uh, submit a PR. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. If you if you chuck that in, I'll, um, I'll add it to the, the repo. Perfect. Sweet. Well, um, yeah, nice. I'll see you guys. See you next week. All right. See you then. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.